morning, the record will reflect the presence of counsel for the parties. Uh, Mr. Scott will be on those present. You may be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, are we ready to proceed? The state is ready to proceed. We will begin our first witness or continue with the yes. uh, Detective Blue. Right. Detective, uh, the state's not quite sure what we left off with yesterday, so I'm going to back up a little bit. I think um, you testified yesterday that you had reviewed Officer Natividad's police report as he was the uh, primary patrol officer that first investigated this uh, missing person's investigation involving Carly Scott. Remember that? Yes, sir. And I think we left off where you made contact with um, Charlie Scott's mother twice on February 11th, 2014. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, And then at some point you made contact with the defendant? Yes. The, on the afternoon of February 11, 2014? Yes, sir. Now, uh, can you just tell us uh, briefly, and you may have testified to this yesterday, what, ar what arrangements were made um, to have the defendant come over and uh, meet with you? When I spoke with him on the 11th via telephone, sir, I asked if he was available to meet me that afternoon at which time he informed me that he was not available. He was going out to Hana to help look for Charlie with the family. Okay. And um, were arrangements made that afternoon whether or not he was going to meet with you? Yes, sir. We agreed upon a time for the next morning on February 12th to have him come to the Wailuku station and meet with me. Okay. And did he, uh, what time was that approximately? approximately 8.15 in the morning. And did you meet with the defendant at that time? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Can you describe how that meeting took place? Um, I was outside the Wailuku station waiting for uh, Mr. Capobianco. He drove up in his vehicle. He got out of his vehicle. I greeted him, introduced myself to him, and then escorted him into the CID office. Okay. Now you said he he drove up in this vehicle. Could you describe what type of vehicle that was? Uh, it was a lifted four uh, Toyota 4Runner. And uh, when you say lifted, does that mean it was higher than the, uh, I guess, the stock or the the, yeah, the, the stock model 4Runner? Uh, yeah. Check that's the lead. That's fine. I'll withdraw that. Um, can, can you describe how it was lifted? Um, it looked like it had a suspension lift. It had bigger than normal tires on top of it. When you, uh, what greeting, if any, took place when, when you first met with uh, Mr. Capoglia, the defendant? I introduced myself to him, thanked him for coming to meet with me, and we went into the, I, I escorted him into the CID office. Could you please describe the defendant's demeanor at that time when you greeted him and thanked him for coming? Casual. 
Um, and you said at some point you took him to the police station? I escorted him into the police station to my, the CID office. All right, please describe how you escorted the defendant into the police station uh, that morning. I just asked him, thank you for coming, uh, follow me. And we just casually walked into my office. Was it just you and Mr. Capobianco, or were there any other uh, officers with you at that time when you greeted him? Just me at that time, sir. And when you say you escorted him into into your office, could, could you describe that for us? Well, what do you mean by your office? Um, within the Guadalupe Police Station, there's several divisions. Because I'm with the criminal investigation, Guadalupe section, my office is in the, the main building. So you got to go through the entrance, take a left, take a right, and then my, our, our CID office is right there. Okay. In order to get to get to your office first, though, is the uh, Wailuku Police Station a secured facility? Certain parts of the building it is, sir. To get into the part where the officers and detectives' offices are, is that a secured door? Yes, sir. And so how do you get into that door? Uh, swipe card. And you were able to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. So once you got into that portion, did you have to go through another secured area to get to the criminal investigation division? Yes, sir. And what is that? Another swipe card to my office door. And when you say your office, is that just your office alone or is that um, an office of more than more than yourself? More than myself, all the different detectives inside there. Could, could you describe how that area is where all the other detectives are? Um, Basically, it's like a big room like this, and it's partitioned off into different cubicles. So there's no, in the in the main floor or in that main office area, there's no separate enclosed offices in the middle portion? No. Are there separate enclosed offices? Yes, sir. And who would be in those offices? Um, that would be the captain and the person's lieutenant and the property lieutenant. Are there other enclosed rooms within the um, Office of the Criminal Investigation Division? Yes, sir. And which rooms are those? Um, you have computer forensic room, um, the, uh, I would say, storage room, uh, where we keep our refrigerator. That's about it. Well, how about it? where are interviews conducted? Oh, in the interview room, sorry. Are, is there more than one interview room? There's two, sir. Okay. And how many persons, if you know, could fit into one interview room? Comfortably six. So uncomfortably more than six? Uncomfortably more than six, yes. Okay. Um, after you led or you, you escorted uh, the defendant into the criminal investigation division, where did you guys go? Uh, to the interview room. Could you describe the defendant's demeanor during this time as you're leading him into the uh, secured area and into the uh, criminal investigation division area? He, he was calm, not very talkative. Um, he was always on his phone. When you say on his phone, what do you mean by that? Uh, he was always looking at his phone, doing something. And what kind of phone is this? I believe it was... Uh, was it a cell phone or was it... A cell phone. Looks like that's the lead. Judge, it's just... The injection is the same. What kind of phone is this? A cell phone, sir. Thank you. Now... Detective, are, did you have training in conducting interviewing of e either witnesses or people um, you're going to interview for, for whatever reason? Yes, sir. And what kind of training is this? Uh, it's uh, called the read technique. It's a 40-hour course. Basically, it covers um, written statements, Nonverbal cues, body languages. You know.
And without telling us um, anything more specific, but were you trained on the significance of body language and, and nonverbal cues, as you call them? Yes, sir. And were you trained to look for those? Yes, sir. Now, did you have a chance to interview the defendant that morning, um, sometime around 8.15 or so, within the Criminal Investigation Division interview room? <coughs> Yes, sir, I did. Could you describe how he, how you escorted him into the interview room? Uh, I led the way. We reached the room. I told um, Mr. Capibiaco, please have a seat on the chair. We went into the room. Okay, and when you say we, is it just you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Did anyone else join you folks at some other point? Uh, Detective Lee came in okay. shortly after. Pardon me? Detective Lee joined us shortly after. Shortly after what? Um, we went into the room. Okay. And was, were you able to conduct an interview with the defendant at that time? Yes, sir. Now, Sergeant Lee, what was the purpose of that interview with the defendant that morning, um, that first interview? The intention is basically was to Find out a little bit more background about what was happening. What was happening in Charlie's life? Uh, how she was acting? Um, you know, if she has any issues that she was dealing with? Um, where she could have gone? Was she, did, has she confided in anybody that she wanted to hurt herself? Was thinking of hurting herself? You know, basically general questions. At that point, had you received any information from anyone whether or not Charlie Scott had been harmed in any way? No, sir. And at that point, did you consider the defendant to be a suspect in a criminal case? No, sir. At that point, how about a person of interest in a criminal case? No, sir. At this point, did you consider the missing person's investigation to be a criminal case? No, sir. Now, pursuant to your training using the read technique, did you have, um, well, first of all, did, did an interview take place? Yes, sir. I, I'm sorry, Nader. Um, just a point of clarification in terms of the spelling of this technique. Okay, can you spell it for, for the... Uh... R-E-I-D, sir. Thank you. Now, pursuant to your investigation and the read technique, well, I was going to ask you a question before that. Um, did an interview take place that morning with the defendant? Yes, sir. And do you recall approximately how long that interview lasted? Approximately 35 minutes. And during that interview, did you observe the defendant's body language, as you said earlier, or and his person as you were interviewing him? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to ask you some specific questions now. What, if anything, caught your attention with respect to the defendant's body language as you were interviewing him? Object as to relevance. Your Honor, he's trained to look at certain the, uh, particular I, on, on that particular uh, grounds, uh, the court will overrule uh, I'll object as to foundation as well. The objection is sustained. Okay, let's go to some foundation. With respect to body language, what did you learn during that 40 hours of training in the read technique? Certain, there are certain um, involuntary clues that people Actually, I'm, I'm going to object to that.
Thank you, Honor. Okay, Detective, I'm going to ask you again. What visual observations, if any, did you make with respect to defendant's person as you're interviewing him during this first interview at approximately or a little after 8.15 in the morning? Basically, Ms. Capablanco's body language was, he, he, he kind of, you know, wasn't really attentive. He's kind of slouched back in his chair, sometimes had his arms folded, had his arms in front of him, you know, wouldn't make, couldn't make contact. When I asked him questions, um, he'd have to kind of look up and, and think before he would answer, you know, instead of just, when I asked him a question, just get a response. You know, so it was, it was, there wasn't a sense of urgency or, or I, I wouldn't say, it was just cold. Did you, did you observe any type of emotions from the defendant as you're going through this morning interview? No. Check the, okay. So, sorry. Sure. Which one I checked? All right. Now, um, for the record, though, can, can you you mentioned he was sit back with his arms folded? Can can you show us how you did that? Like really, you know, normally when people talk to you, we'll, we'll sit up, look at characters and stuff. I'll object as to relevance and lack of foundation as to how normally people do things. Objection. That's fine. Move we'll to strike any. Motion to strike. Okay, hold on. Uh, Sergeant, can you just show us, if you recall, how he was sitting? Um, lean you back with his arms folded as you described earlier. Like this, sir. Keep back, you know, or as large here, down by here. Okay, hold on. I, I have to make a record on that. You know what I mean? The record reflect that Sergeant Lou uh, pushed his chair back um, away from the, uh, I guess, the table part of the witness stand, leaned back in his chair, and the first motion he did was places two hands across his abdomen area while he was leaning back. And the second position that officer, or that Sergeant Lou did was, while leaning back again, placed both hands crossed um, against his lower chest area in front of him. Proceed. Thank you. You also mentioned that he was looking up at some point while you, was this while you were asking questions? Yes, sir. Okay, could you demonstrate that for us? Uh, he would be looking up to the right, kind of, with uh, that look. Okay, and the record should reflect that Sergeant Lou um, did face upwards, uh, his head with his eyes looking upwards to which direction? To the right, sir. Uh, to the right side. Was, was the defendant cooperative during this interview? Yes, sir. 
At any time did he tell you he did not want to be interviewed? No, sir, he did not. Now, before coming to court, um, Sergeant Lu, did you have a chance to – well, first of all, um, what was the interview you, you had with the defendant that morning, was it recorded? Yes, sir. And did you have a chance to review that recording? Yes, sir. And was it also transcribed in written form? Yes, sir, it was. And mm -hmm. what, if anything, did you do with respect to – Checking the accuracy of the transcription with the recording. Um, once, our, once we get it, um, I'll review the transcript while listening to the, the audio recording to make sure that um, it's correct. If I need to make any corrections, I'll note it on the transcript, and I'll send it back to my secretaries to go redo the transcript. Okay, so did you do that in this case? Yes, sir. And were you satisfied that the, uh, the written transcript um, accurately reflected in substance the interview that uh, you had with the defendant that morning? Yes, sir. Were there some words um, that were unintelligible or where the uh, transcriber was unable to, uh, I guess, put down what it said? Objection, lack of foundation about what the transcriber was able to do. The objection is so Okay. Let me ask you this. Without, without this... When you review the transcript, were there portions of the transcript where some of the words were not trans were not written in the actual transcription itself? Yes, sir. Okay. Could you explain what what that is? Sometimes during an interview, um, when we're speaking with um, a person, sometimes we have a we kind of talk over each other, so it kind of cancels it out, so the, the transcriber can't understand what both of us are saying, so um, instead of trying to guess at what we're trying to say, they'll, they'll write unintelligible on the transcript. Okay. And are there portions of that in the transcribed interview that you had with the defendant that morning? Yes, sir. Otherwise, though, is the when you listen to the recording itself, was that an accurate depiction of the recorded interview that you had with the defendant that morning? Yes, sir. I'm, um, detectives, I'm going to show you what has been marked as state's exhibit. 63 and 64, which have been marked for identification. You know, may I approach? You may do so. Thank you. And let me take a look at these and uh, I'll have further questions when you're done with that. Okay, are you done looking at those? Yes, sir. Okay, um, State's Exhibit 63, which is the mark for identification, uh, do you recognize what that is? The CD. Okay. And you just had earlier that that is an accurate, I guess, uh, recording of the interview you had with the that first. Correct. And 60, Exhibit 64, which has been marked for identification, do you recognize what that was? 
That is the transcription of the audio. And is that an accurate transcription of the audio recording? Yes, sir. With the exception of what you said, there's there, there are some markings that says unintelligible. Correct. You know, at this time, the state would move State Exhibit 63 into evidence and just leave Exhibit 64 as marked for identification. Which one do you have? Um, Sergeant, when was the last time you made the comp comparison between the recording and the transcript to verify the accuracy of the transcript? Uh, about a year ago, sir. Okay. Now, <clears throat> were you able to verify the accuracy of the transcript that's being introduced today in contrast to the transcript that you looked at a year ago? As far as the transcript, I saw that yesterday. Okay, so you, and that's the one that's is going to be introduced today? Yes, sir. And your testimony is that you reviewed that in its entirety yesterday? Yes, sir. Okay, so when you said you did it a year ago, um, I, that thought, I thought you were referring to the CD. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Any objection to the court uh, receiving in evidence? Uh, State's exhibit number 63. Not at this time. Meaning no. that there is no objection to be. Well, that with the caveat that all previous objection be re objections be reserved. Uh, Understood. Thank you. All right. Uh, at this time, the court will receive in evidence State's exhibit number 63, marked for identification purposes. And the, any, any uh, objection to the transcript being used to, to assist the jurors in following the recording? Is it going to be introduced into evidence? Ultimately? No, it's just marked for identification. Uh, no objection um, for that purpose. And do we have a sufficient number of copies? Yes, Your Honor. The state will um, will not be publishing the transcript, but will just be playing the recording and providing hard copies of the transcript to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. All right. Judge, can, can we get some time to set that up? Because it didn't work on the trial. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I need to read. Uh, I, I was going to provide the jurors with some information okay, concerning sure. what you're about to do with you. Uh, I don't know how much setting up you have to do, but. Um, well, it's going to be disruptive. I, I can't do it while you're you're speaking with the jurors. Approximately how long? Um, five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Then uh, we'll take a, a, a five-minute recess so you can do that. Okay. Thank you. Just go right on the monitor. Right? Yeah. The sound will come on the monitor. I think I can put it right next to this. Water. 